Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm the one and only, and today I'm gonna show you guys how to factory reset an M1 or M2 Mac, or really any future Apple Silicon Mac. Now, it's not as straightforward as something like the iPhones where you just go into settings and hit factory restore. There's a few extra steps you need to do here, and Apple doesn't make it as cutthroat or as straightforward. So let's go ahead and begin. Now, first things first, you wanna make sure that your software version is up to date or at least to the latest OS. In order to check, you can go up here to the Apple logo up top and hit About This Mac. Now, as you can see, I am currently on macOS Ventura 13.4.1, which at the time of recording, this is the most recent. Now, if you want to know how to upgrade your OS, you're going to want to click down here to System Settings. Then you're going to want to click on General. And then finally, you're going to want to click Software Update. And if you do have an update, it should pop up right here. I currently do have updates available, but only for Final Cut Pro, Motion, and I believe Logic, so I will disregard that for now. However, if you're on something like macOS 11 or 12, I highly recommend you upgrade before starting. Okay, now next, similar to iPhones, you wanna make sure that you do have a backup. You will have to go into your time machine on Mac, so you can simply search that up over here with the magnifying glass, click on time machine, and then from here you can add a backup disk. Now, I already have a backup of this Mac, um, so there's no need to do that, but always make sure that you have a backup that way. If you do happen to purchase a different Mac in the future, or you're gonna upgrade to a better one, you can then just transfer all of your information onto the new Mac. Okay, now the next steps are very, very important. You're gonna want to remove any account associated with this Mac, especially if you're planning on selling this to another individual. Most importantly, you're gonna wanna remove your iCloud accounts and also your iMessage. So let's start with iCloud, and first you wanna make sure that you detach any kind of attachment to your iCloud account from this Mac. So what you're going to want to do again is go down to system settings, click on your name here where it says Apple ID. Now, once you've clicked on your name, you can see you have different options here. You have iCloud, media and purchases, family sharing, and then all of your devices. You're going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom and down here you'll have an option to sign out. So let's click that. Now it says if you want to keep a copy of your iCloud data on this Mac. And of course that would defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do here. So make sure to uncheck everything because we do not want anything left over on this Mac. So after unchecking everything, let's hit continue. And now it says, do you want to download a copy of your iCloud photos to this Mac? We don't want that, so we're gonna hit delete from Mac. It's gonna ask again for a confirmation. Just make sure you keep hitting delete from Mac. And now it's asking for your Apple ID password. So really quickly type that in. Okay, and now we're gonna hit continue. Okay, now here this is asking for the computer or Mac password. This is the password that you type in when you initially lift the lid and uh, open up your Mac. All right, so now that we've typed in our Mac password, we're gonna hit okay. And just like that, now the Mac is no longer associated with our Apple ID. So we're doing good so far. Now the other important account that we need to look at, and actually it's bouncing down here for us, is you're gonna want to log out of your iMac messages. Now, one important thing to know is that on earlier versions of Mac OS, you're going to have to individually go in to your iMessages and log out. But if you have Mac OS 13 or higher, so as you can see, if we click on messages, it's already logged us out. And so this is good. We want to ensure that none of our personal data, none of our iMessages are left over. So if you see this, this is a good sign. Once we've logged out of iCloud and iMessage, we're ready to rock and roll and actually reset the Mac and format it. Okay, so now this step, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna shut down the Mac. So you're gonna go up here to the top left, click on the Apple logo, and we're gonna go ahead and shut down this machine. So hit shut down. Okay, so now at this step, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna press and hold your power button. Your power button is the button over here at the top right. And again, you're gonna wanna hold it like so. 
you're going to see the Apple logo and it says continue holding for startup options. So make sure you continue holding and now it's going to say loading startup options. As soon as it says that you can let go. Now here you're going to see two options. You're going to see your hard drive and then options. You're definitely going to want to go over to options and hit continue. Now at this point, if you are an administrator of the account, your sole account should appear here. If you have multiple accounts on your Mac, make sure that you click any that you know the passwords for. If you don't know any of the passwords to any of the accounts or forgot them, you do have this convenient link down here that says forgot all passwords. Thankfully, my passwords I do remember. So I'm gonna type in the computer's password, not your iCloud password. Now we hit continue and here you're going to have different options. You're going to have restore from time machine, reinstall Mac OS, Safari and disk utility. The first one is for what I mentioned at the beginning. You should have a backup that way you can restore any and all information if you do happen to upgrade your machine or buy a Mac at a later time. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to disk utility. We're going to click on that, highlight it and go to continue. Now from here, you're going to have two different options. Now over here on the top left, this is your standard disk. This is your hard drive. And this is what we're going to want to erase. That way nothing is left on the Mac and it essentially is going to be factory reset for the next buyer for if you're returning it and things of that nature. The way to do this is you want to highlight it, click on your disk. In this case, mine is just named to the default Macintosh HD. It's likely yours will also be named this. You're going to want to come over here to erase. And now here you're going to have different options. You're going to have the option to reformat it, whether you have it encrypted, uh, case sensitive or both. But for 99% of people, you're just going to want to leave it on the default, which is APFS. You can name it something differently, but honestly, it's just best to just leave it there at the default. And now you're going to hit erase. It's going to ask for confirmation. And of course, we're going to hit erase Mac once more. It's going to ask if you're sure. And yes, we're going to hit erase Mac and restart. So this may take a minute or two for it to load up and then we will go on to the next steps. Okay, and now after a bit of editing magic, we're back. And so now you're going to be presented with this screen that says to activate the Mac. Now here it's going to ask you to select a Wi-Fi network. And the reason it's asking is because you're going to have to reinstall a new copy of Mac OS onto the computer. So what you're going to want to do is come here to the top right, click the Wi-Fi logo, and then your Wi-Fi network should appear. So like normal, as if you're connecting to your Wi-Fi network for the first time, click on your Wi-Fi network and type in your password and wait maybe five seconds for it to connect. Now, once you successfully connect, you can see the Wi-Fi logo is now filled in and it's going to think for a little bit and then it should give us the option to hit next here momentarily. All right, it says your Mac is activated and now it's popping up and it says exit to recovery. So this is good. We're almost done with the formatting and reset process. So let's go back and go to exit to recovery. Now here it's important you can check your disk utility again if you wish, but it should be erased and see how there's nothing left there. So we have 245 gigs available. This is a 256 gigabyte hard drive, so we're looking good. Okay, so now that we've checked, if you did decide to check, just make sure to click up here for disk utility if you want to go back and then just go to quit disk utility. It should take you back to the same screen. Now here it's important, you must reinstall a new copy of Mac OS. Because we had the latest one, it's asking us to reinstall a new copy of Mac OS Ventura, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to highlight that, click continue and it's gonna present us with a typical first screen for installation. So we're gonna hit continue. As is typical, we have to accept the terms of the software license agreement. So of course we're gonna hit agree, even though we read absolutely none of it. It's gonna ask you onto which disk you want to install Mac OS. If you had like an external hard drive, there might be a different disk, but of course we wanna click on our standard Macintosh HD, highlight it and click continue. It's gonna say your computer is not connected to power. Now I have a good bit of juice on this Mac, it is at 73%, I should be fine. But I do believe if you're under 50% battery, it will force you to plug in your uh, power adapter. I think we're good, so we're gonna hit continue. Now this part is the longest and what's likely gonna take the most time for you. Now this process, this phase is entirely dependent on your Wi-Fi network and your settings. So depending on how fast your Wi-Fi is, this may take a lot longer or a lot shorter. 
It's telling me that my estimated time is about two hours and 39 minutes, but this will likely drop. I do have somewhat fast Wi-Fi, and so this may or may not take, if I had to guess, maybe about an hour. So this is why I asked to definitely plug it into power if you're under 50%. So we're gonna go ahead and let it do that. We're gonna let it reinstall a new copy of macOS Ventura, and then once that is complete, I will be back and then we will finish off the final steps. All right guys, so like I mentioned, it only took me about 30 minutes or so, not the two hours and 40 minutes it was quoting, but if you get to this screen, which reads select your country or region, this is how you know you have done everything correctly. Rest assured, all of your personal data at this point has been completely wiped and the Mac has been correctly formatted and a fresh copy of the recent macOS version is now installed. So this is the same screen you will get if you open up the lid of a MacBook for the first time fresh out of the box. And now the MacBook is completely ready if you were gonna sell it to someone, give it away to a family member, or if you change your mind and wanted to return it to the Apple store, it is correctly formatted. And speaking of returns, if you are within the 14 day window, just make sure that you keep the documentation chargers as well as a wall adapter make sure you package everything nice and neat and then that way apple can issue you a full refund so guys i really hope these instructions were very straightforward and clear if you found this video useful please drop a like as it helps my channel out tremendously and if for any reason you got caught up in between any of those steps and are encountering any issues please feel free to follow me either on instagram or twitter tweet at me or dm me and i'd be more than happy to help try troubleshoot. Alrighty guys, that's been it for me. As always, make sure to stay hydrated. Hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see future tech content just like this. And with that, I'm clocking out for now, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.